it's all about your audience. So a lot of people mess up with their content because they post stuff that resonates with them. Well, <laughs> that's really not going to help you out in the long run because, well, engagement-wise or bottom line, because you can't really like your own stuff. I mean, you can, but that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But what you need is content that people are going to like, share, love, you know, uh, comment on, which is engagement. So you have to think in the terms of what your ideal client wants to see. And you have to learn that and speak their language, not yours. Welcome to Marketing Stuff. I'm excited for today's show. One of my favorite people on the planet. He doesn't know that, but he is one of my favorite people on the planet. Thank you for joining today. If you're returning, I appreciate you for being in the family and coming back. If you're new here, join us. It's all good. We're welcoming. This is a great place to be. We're here to help you level up your marketing game in a way that doesn't make you feel like you're overwhelmed and drowning. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get all the notifications for any new episodes that I drop. But that's enough about that stuff. Let me introduce the guest here. Uh, he's helped hundreds of business owners turn their social media profiles into cash machines. He is a master of social media engagement and connecting with customers. And he's taken the Web3 space by storm, helping small business owners find their place in the space. Mr. Douglas, welcome to Marketing Stuff. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what a rousing introduction, my bro. Yeah, Appreciate that's you, how man. we do it around here. We, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I yes. Go. So, <laughs> a, a quick, quick, interesting story uh, for anybody that's been watching the show. I did not meet Mister Douglas on TikTok. Uh, I actually <laughs> met him on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. um, and I don't. He, he was talking to me about a, a, a some software to help build. Yeah. Um, all types of stuff, right? All types yeah. of stuff. Um, I no longer yeah, use the software. I think he still does. I think he still does, but I don't. Um, <laughs> I've, I've moved on to, to other things, but that's how we, that's how we get acquainted, right? Um, it was pretty, we've known each other for a while now. It's probably yes. been about three or four years. No, I'm closer to five, I believe. That was about okay. five. Years. I was like, man, yeah, because yeah. it, was, it was right around the time I moved into my house. Yeah. And I've been there, yeah. man, I can't believe I've been in my house for about five years. Yeah, that's exactly. that's wild. That's wild. So yeah. yes, um, this was pretty pretty early on. I was just really making like the the official transition into the marketing space. I had been doing marketing before in retail and then as a financial advisor, but I wouldn't have called myself a marketer. And then right around that time where I was transitioning, that's that's when you were like, "Hey, I got this software." I'm like, "Oh, well, the stuff that I need anyway. Let me check it out. <laughs> Let me check yeah. it out." Uh so I appreciate you for, you know, in the beginning, the guidance that you were providing me, I do that, that stuff that, that was, it, it's funny. Cause on a previous show we were talking about, uh, and if you, if you didn't see this show, you need to check it out. Uh, we were talking about writing books to grow your business. Um, and we were just talking about the value of paying for coaching. And while I didn't pay you directly, you know, I bought the software and, and what came with that was some of your guidance and it helped me figure out a lot of stuff that I didn't want to do. And in, in the marketing space, that's big. Like there's too much to yeah. do, right? Yeah. Right. Like sometimes yeah. you got to figure out what you don't want to do, right? And I knew exactly. I, I figured out real fast. I don't want to build funnels, right? I don't want to do that for nobody. It's just, you know I just knew. I was like, oh hell, no, I'm hey, good. I just want to learn. <laughs> Man, you know what? I even even now I'm, I'm like I don't even want to build mine no more, right? Like. No, no, no. It's learn like, it. <laughs> there you go. I want to, I want to learn it well enough to know, like, this is the type that we need. Right. You, because, here's the structure. Go build it. Yeah. I to cut you off, but you know, we need to know the basics of those types of things. So when we grow up and you know, level up in our business, we know what to look for in the people that we need to bring on our team. We Absolutely. What, you know what I'm saying? What we need. Absolutely. So, yeah. And honestly, to be <laughs> able to, what I find is that the, the, the more that I know being able to coach my people too, uh, mm -hmm. come, goes a long way for them to stay. So, yes. you know, when I'm helping somebody and they're like, I don't know why this funnel's not working. And then you can jump in like, Oh, well, it's been a while, but you know, try this. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, it's been a minute. 
but it, it's it's interesting because how we met was through social media, and and that's that's why that's why you're here today because one of the things yeah. that you do <clears throat> better than better than most than almost all is the engagement piece, right? And so yeah. talk to us a little bit about what is the importance of social yeah, media right. engagement for small businesses. And then also share a little bit of how that, how that relates, how the social media stuff starts to tie into the web three space. Oh, great question. So as small business owners, you know, we have to get as much, as many eyeballs on our, our links, our product services as possible. <laughs> And the way to do that through social media is to have the most engaging content that you can possibly put out. So, and that doesn't matter, you know, what platform you want to have as much engagement as possible. And uh, the way to do that is by putting out engaging content. <laughs> so, you know, asking engaging questions, um, things that's going to, questions that's going to help you position your message in front of the right people so you can actually attract uh, people with money, high paying, ultra high, pay, ultra high net worth and high net worth individuals, six, seven figure earners, eight figure earners. Those are the people that's going to help grow your business. You can't be trying to uh, market to people that don't have money. So as far as the Web3 goes, um, great question. So with Web3, a lot of people don't realize Web3 is basically uh, the the future. So with technology, the blockchain, everything that's that we've been using online is changing. And this is why Mark Zuckerberg actually jumped in front of the line <laughs> and trademarked the name Meta and changed, uh, rebranded to Facebook because he knows a whole lot of, about where we're going with this stuff. Not to get into that, you know, whole rabbit hole, whatever. But as far as what's going on with the uh, businesses, you can say, so, so Web1, we can break it down, go back a little bit. So Web1, that was pretty much the first iteration of the uh, computers and the uh, internet where it was uh, basically read only. So it was very static. The information was going one way. So when you had web two, you're talking about the, the uh, internet age where it's going two ways now. So you have platforms like Facebook or YouTube where you can actually communicate and, uh, and uh, build a community. But Web3 is going into the monetization. So you're talking about read, write, and monetize. And that is where we're headed. And it's all about the data. You know, it was a big fuss about Twitter a while back when Elon wanted to buy Twitter. <laughs> and uh, they had a situation where I think uh, he tried to back out a the deal. They tried to make him buy it. And it was over the, the information, the whole the beef was over the, the bots. You know, they had all these bots on Twitter. People were trying to complain. People were complaining about this engagement. Was it real? Was it fake? Are these accounts real or fake? Elon said, oh, what the hell would I just buy it? Long story short, <laughs> everybody knows what happened with that. And uh, it was really all about Web3. And that's where we're going. And now you're seeing that they'll be doing uh, payments over there on Twitter. So it's all about monetization, community, and uh, decentral decentralization, taking the power back from decentralized uh in uh what's the term from the centralized authorities i guess you would say that i hope i didn't no I, <laughs> I, I i think we're picking up what you're putting I'm down but i i okay. you're 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 bringing up another conversation that may take us somewhere somewhere else because yeah, I, I, I also I'm think it's no 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 it's good that's that's what this is for right i also think it's right. interesting because the decentralization only happens with participation Right. And so that has a lot even to do with Web 2. It got real centralized because no one was no one was participating. Yeah. So we 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 might have to come back to that one on a later date and, and talk more yeah. about Web 3 and, and, and how that relates, you know, to the yeah. centralization and participate. Like because that's a whole nother thing yeah. that a lot of folks yeah, that yeah. I'm hearing in the crypto space are concerned about. Absolutely. And average people out there don't even have a clue what we're talking about right now. Like, well, who? <laughs> so, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, we got to talk about that again. Absolutely. So you shared a little bit and you said, you know, we have to get eyeballs on our stuff as much as possible. And the way to do that 
is through the creation of engaging content. So how does a business go about number one, improving their quality of their content? Cause I think sometimes we say quality content, but we talk about it as like, as ethereal, right? Like quality content, but nobody's really talking about how to actually make it. And then when I make content that I believe is quality through whatever efforts, how do I increase engagement on that thing? Awesome. So one thing I would say, let's talk the top of my head, research, you know, who is your target? Who are you trying to sign up or who are you trying to sell to? And you have to know, you have to think, what, are, what, is, what is it that they want to see? You have to put your mind, you have to put yourself, put your, uh, yourself in their shoes. So you have to, I think uh, there's a platform called like uh, Quora. You can go on Quora. You can find out what people want to know. Uh, AnswerThePublic.com. It's another great platform. If you don't really know what to put out, these these basically are cheat codes for you. Yeah. And, this, and that's, that's just two off the top of my head. I'm sure it's a ton more. I'm pretty sure you know a bunch of them as well. Yes. So <laughs> That's one of the great, the easiest way to figure out what people want to know, and you can get right into the conversation that's going on in their mind. Because that's what you got to do. You got to get into people's heads right then and there. Meet people, uh, the right people, right message, right time. That is the key. So, uh, how to create engaging content? What was that? What was the second part? Did I yeah. get that right? How to how to create it, but then also how to get more engagement on content uh-huh. after I've done the research. Right, right, right. So, it's all about your audience. So a lot of people mess up with their content because they post stuff that resonates with them. Well, <laughs> that's really not going to help you out in the long run because, well, engagement-wise or bottom line, because you can't really like your own stuff. I mean, you can, but that's a whole other conversation for another day. But what you need is content that people are going to like, share, love, you know, uh, comment on, which is engagement. So you have to think in the terms of what your ideal client wants to see. And you have to learn that and speak their language, not yours. Right. Right. Um, it's, I it's, it's interesting because I've had this conversation with folks before and it's funny that you mentioned Cora. Um, I'm thinking right now, let me see uh, live, live on the show. Let me see if I can, if I can pull it. I did a uh, YouTube short not too long ago where I went on Quora and I found a question that was like, why are podcasts becoming so, so popular? Right. Mm -hmm. And I just answered it. I I went on, (laughs) I was like, all right, cool. You know, we'll, we'll get on here real quick and, and respond. Mm -hmm. But that video got almost 1500 views. And it was just like a real quick 30 second, 30 second video yeah. that I did on my phone that really wasn't um, it didn't, it didn't take a ton of like effort on my part, right? There there's work that was done as far as like editing and trimming the clip and doing all that other stuff, but like mm-hmm. very little for the, for the return that you get. Right. So I love that you mentioned Cora because sometimes as business owners, we have answers. You've been in this, if you've been in your space longer than six months, you, you got answers to questions. Maybe, maybe not all the yeah. questions, but you got answers right. to questions. Right. And so core is a really great place for you to start going and like, what are questions that people are asking? And then taking mm-hmm. those and, and going, all right, this is my perspective on it. So I love right. that you I love that you brought those answer to public's great core is fantastic. There's also some other sites that really get into like the more research side they don't really tell you mm-hmm. the questions that they're asking, but they'll tell you where your customers are going to find information. And my, one of my favorites is Spark Toro. And you can type mm-hmm. in there the title of your customer, or some places that they go and hang out. And it'll tell you, here's some other places that they're going. Here's the content that they're looking at. Here are the podcasts that they're listening to. And that's essentially giving you the opportunity, like you said, to, to get in <clears throat> their head to figure out, like, what are these people actually engaging with? Right? Yes. And and we do, <laughs> we we have a tendency to drink our own Kool Aid, and be like, "This is great! This this content's amazing." <laughs> so, talk to talk to us about what are some best practice for social media engagement. Okay, so I would say number one, and 
let's just talk about Facebook in general. I think yep. most people are on Facebook and that's pretty much where we, that's where we met. And that's where my yeah. training actually originated from. It was a Facebook training and now it's pretty much for any social media platform. So <laughs> I always, when I do my classes, you know, the first thing we go over is page cleanup. You know, a lot of people, especially for the newbie entrepreneur who maybe, you know, maybe coming from corporate or maybe, you know, just getting into uh, entrepreneurship from wherever they came, but you don't know what you don't know. So the first thing you want to do is clean up your page. So if you have anything on your page that you wouldn't want your ideal client to see, it might need to come off, you know? So you want to clean up your page, um, clean up your list for sure. Like if your family and friends are not helping you and you, you know, uh, you got a bunch of uh, people that's just watching and not really engaging or supporting you, get rid of them. Like, it's your page. It's your profile. You don't have to do that. Like, I see people all the time complaining. Uh, Nobody's engaging in my posts. I'm deleting inactive uh, users and blah, blah, blah. Just uh, tell me, hey, please help me set my, reset my algorithm, which is a lie. <laughs> you know I was going to go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I think it's funny because I don't reset my algorithm. It's just, it's just solid. Like I, I don't, I don't know what to tell like folks. I don't think they understand that the algorithm is a math equation. <laughs> like you don't reset math equations. Right. <laughs> so, long story short, what you do, if anybody listening, if you really, really want to reset your algorithm while we're on the subject, what you really want to do is use the uh, snooze, uh, unfollow, unfriend, because what the algorithm is is a formula that shows you what you like to see. So if you want to re quote unquote reset it, <laughs> you need to snooze, unfollow, unfriend. And on Facebook, you also have favorites. It used to be called see first. So you can click the three dots on the, uh, on any post or on a person's profile and you'll be able to, uh, mark them as a favorite yep. and you get up to 30 of those. So <clears throat> I believe you still get 30, right? So you can use, you can basically have the, your, your your top 30 people with the best content showing up on your news feed first every time in whatever order. Every time you pull up your app, you'll see, I'll see Maurice. I'll see somebody who reminds me of Maurice. But anybody, anyway, you want to have, you want to curate your content is what I'm saying. That's how you, that's how you curate it. Um, page setup. So you want to have a, uh, a, a profile pic that's inviting a smile on your face and you know you don't want to have a picture of your dog your cat or your food nobody's buying from dogs and cats people want to buy from people so let's stop doing that y'all okay <laughs> so uh your cover photo you want to have a clear offer like you have a a banner it's called a banner you want to put a banner up you can do those get those off of canva and you basically just want to let people know who you're here to serve. That way, as soon as they come to your profile, you can go ahead and attract the people that you need to attract yep. and repel the people that you need to repel, which nobody really talks about. That's the whole purpose, to attract the people with money and repel the broke people. So <laughs> let's, 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 let's go back on that one. Because I think you're, you're right. Not enough people talk about, like, we get into, we, yeah, we get into the marketing stuff and then, you know, <laughs> It's like, well, you're trying to find find the right customers and get as many, but not enough of us talk about the value of sending people away. <laughs> Man, it's so whew, so valuable. <laughs> well, you realize actually we were talking about this before we jumped on before we jumped on here. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. the podcast launch formula stuff. And it was like, hey, if you if you're somebody that can't figure out 40 people you would want to invite on your yeah. show or 40 topics you want to talk about, like you and I working together is not going to work because you have a lot more Nothing. work that you need to do on the front end just to be ready to say, I want to do something like this, right? You either haven't yeah. been in business long enough. Cause listen, if you've been in business three years, like, and you can't come up with 40 people to talk to, there's a problem. You're doing something wrong. Yeah. There's, there's a problem. Like you haven't met 40 people that you want to, that you want to have a conversation with. Right. Right. Like you can't go on your LinkedIn and find 40 people that you want to talk to. You can't go on your <laughs> Facebook and find 40. Like yo, TikTok. 
<laughs> Everybody on TikTok. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you can't inbox 40 people on TikTok and get yeah. them on the show. Like, even yeah, if you that's... so, so it is that point of like repelling people is how you stand out. Yeah. And so exactly. talk talk and about we... that a little bit. Cause I I think uh, that I think that's a lot to do with the whole like why people struggle with engagement. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, you know. And when we go on any social media platform, this is what we do. I don't know if this is, you can see my thumb is just, we just scroll, 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 scroll. So your job as a marketer is to, number one, stop the scroll. Number two is to get them to actually read your content. And they're not going to read your content if they don't read the first line, which is your headline, which is the main thing that's going to stop the scroll. Uh, what was the question? I apologize. We're talking about we're oh, talking yeah. about repelling folks and how that yeah, yeah, how that yeah. in, wraps into so this engagement thing. Right. So instead of you know posting stuff that you saw somebody else post because it got good engagement, you need to be thinking of stuff that's going to make you stand out. So what I call it is uh, the uh, disruptive disruptive disrupt, uh, excuse me disruptive insights. <clears throat> If you're not posting disruptive insights, people are not going to stop the scroll. It's called a pattern interrupt. I'm pretty sure some of your marketers out there familiar with the term pattern interrupt. That's your number one job because if you can't do that, because your number one job is getting attention, and you do that with pattern interrupts and uh, disrupting uh, insights. So that's really what branding is like. And you know, I could talk about this for hours. You already know. You know, we got a couple of the same mentors, whatever. But our branding, uh, man. It is so the two things well I say one thing that will always feed you as a business owner or uh, entrepreneur is a personal brand and there's a reason why a lot of people don't like getting into personal brands but if you think about it there is not one big box or big box store big corporation that doesn't use paid celebrities now think about that why are they paying celebrities to promote their products. It's because they know people buy from people. And if you have that connection with that celebrity, then that's a whole another uh, deeper conversation we can get into how people just worship celebrities, but it's for a reason why they use them as pitch people. <clears throat> so a lot of people talk about it. they don't want to have a personal brand. I get it, but this is where we at these, uh, in these days and times. You know, you have to have some type of personal brand. Uh, you don't have to necessarily be the face of your business, but personal branding is something that you must take serious. I, and it's all about standing out. At the end of the day, it's not your logo, your website, the fancy colors. It's about standing out. At the end of the day, nutshell, that's what branding is. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think it's worth noting that anybody listening, whether you want to have a personal brand or not, you do. You right? have one. Like it's it's you're just a matter of if it's good or not. Yeah, you're already branding. You're already making. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> this is a killer this new quote unquote quote, content creator. The moment you signed up for social media, you became a content creator. Yeah, whether you knew it or not. Listen, I, I <laughs> yeah. get it though on the on the people like defining themselves as the content creator because it is it's <laughs> yeah. a it's a it, you it's a different vibe when you like I create content Absolutely. and you put that you put that stake in the ground. You like I create content. You and you start looking. And you're like, oh, snap, like I've been creating content since I wrote my first paper in middle school. Right. Like exactly. if we, a buddy of mine um, and he'll be on he'll be on the show later. Uh, he talks about like the idea, like everything you do is content. And everything. he dri he drives that home. He's uh he's a digital marketing manager for a company out here called UFG. They're one of the largest insurance companies in Iowa. And he just it, this is like his thing since he's become the digital marketing manager there, it's like helping his team see like when somebody's, when a group of people are smiling, laughing, eating lunch, that's content for us. Mm -hmm. We just have to figure out what lens we want to, we want to shine it through. Right. And so this, this prolifer, this proliferation of like people calling themselves content creators and, and talking about personal brands. I think it's just one of those things of like, I identify as right. If we want to, if we want to kind of go down that road, I finally identify yeah. as, or I, or I, or I pick up the mantle as, because it, it is, um, it's work realizing that you create content. And then, yeah. and then when you have to say like, I create content 
then you start talking about like, well, if I create content and I identify as a content creator, when no one likes my stuff, then a portion of what I do is inadequate. And, yeah. and that's a whole nother thing, right? You're not who you're not, you're not what you do, right? Deal. But I think people, that's one of the things people don't want to identify as is because they don't want to be confronted with the fact of like, when you post something on Facebook, whether, you know, you're somebody's mom and you're posting their baby picture. If nobody gets, if you don't get any likes on it, that's because it wasn't, it wasn't what they wanted to see. Right. And so kind of reeling back to this engagement thing, when you say you're a content creator, yeah. what you're saying is, I am going to place the desires and the engagement of on my profile from my audience above all else. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's work, right? It's, it's yeah, work to work. go out to Cora and figure out the questions that people are yeah. asking and to take the yeah. feedback in the comments of like, Hey, you misspelled something or this yeah, picture is yeah. dark and you need a better camp. Like, these are all arrows that you got to take and you got to, you got to take them and be like, you know what you're right. And so yeah, it's, how do you, how do you manage that? How do you deal with that? Mindset, training. mindset, <laughs> mindset, mindset, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what other people say about us. The only thing that matters is what we say about ourselves and the, the things that we put value on, a lot of times it's because of what happened, you know, externally. And you just can't let the external, was, uh, what, what's going on externally affect the internal. But this is a whole deeper conversation. <laughs> like, uh, I could really talk about yeah, mindset. But you know what? Day. Let's 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 go ahead and take it here, right? Like, we were going to talk about social media engagement, but I think, like, the bigger issue for many small business owners, for many marketers, is that we're so afraid to create something yeah. And to create, gotta- yes. And to create <laughs> enough of something, right? Yeah. Like even thinking about to my very first podcast, it was trash. Yeah, supposed to it be. was trash, <laughs> right? But that was, that's, <laughs> uh, you know, no, right. It's supposed to be true. Yes. Uh, uh, every master was once a disaster. Man, like, absolutely. Absolutely. You know but saying? I think that's, yeah. That's the real thing here. When we start talking into this engagement piece, it's like people are so afraid of like the first post being bad. And it's like, yeah, do it. accept it, <laughs> accept it. Yeah, it is bad. Because, nope, I don't care who you are. I mean, you could be Beyonce. Everything Beyonce put out there ain't going to go viral. Like it's going to get engagement, but it ain't going to go viral. And she's right. Beyonce. Like you can't expect to go viral every post you put out there. I don't care who you are. Yes, like, it's not going to happen. That's not the way the algorithms work. Abs- absolutely <laughs> not. And, qu- and quite frankly, you don't want to go viral for everything. Like, you know, <laughs> how, much, how much pressure would that be if you knew every time I dropped a picture of myself, it got 10 million and views? Still, and you still taking notifications from last June. <laughs> Come man, on, man. I'm telling you, I, I don't think I will post. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah. I got the I got the social media Midas touch. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I'd be like, no. I post twice a year. Once in once in January and then once in June. That's it. <laughs> but Yeah, man. It's like, you know, the mind, again it goes back to mindset, values, you know, what do you what are you uh, putting your focus on? Yes. What do you really want? What's your end goal? What, is your, what are you trying to achieve? You know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> that's what you have to be thinking about. And always, like, every piece of content you put out has to have a purpose. Like, people just winging it, putting out random stuff, not going to work. Like, yeah. I have literally about two or 3,000 pieces of content on my notepad on my phone because as soon as I get an idea, I whip on my phone, I push the microphone, and I start talking. Okay. And that's content. You know what I mean? Yeah. I started, so, I started posting my ideas on Twitter. Just dropping them into it. Yeah. Yep. Like random. Yep. Stream of thought. Boop. Wow. Yep. And you know what? How's it working? It's still working all right. It's working all right. But what it okay. what it has done is like then I can go back, I can screenshot and then share it to LinkedIn when I'm ready. Right. So it's reduced right. my cause I wasn't doing the record thing. I'm like, oh, I need to do this later. And then I lose. I'm like, damn, that was a good piece of content and it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So for me, it was it. It has been posting to Twitter, 
um, things like quick sentences, like, Oh, this, and yeah. then, but Words, it's, right. it's also gotten like, I'll get, I don't have very many 20 followers. So that's not my, Twitter's not my thing. Um, <laughs> right. <neither>. But when <laughs> I do right. get engagement on a piece of content on Twitter, I'm like, Oh, this is decent. Right. Like if I get it, and then that gives you an idea. What to go yeah. With. If I, if I get a, if I get a like or a retweet on something on Twitter, I know that it's, I know that it's good. And so, yeah, for sure. It's not hard to get a retweet on Twitter. <laughs> man, man, on my Twitter, <laughs> on my Twitter is dead. It's dead. Like I don't spend no time on like Twitter. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't until, to be honest, it wasn't until I started this like stream of consciousness thing that like mm-hmm. I was posting more frequently because I go two months with no post. So I'm not surprised that my Twitter is dead. It's just not, it's just not a right. focus for me, yeah. but I love the fact that you're saying right. I have all this content on my phone because I think that becomes kind of the thing. It's like learning what your customers want to see, ingesting that, right? Let that become a part of who you are as a content creator, as a marketer, as a business owner, but then setting yourself up to be successful and documenting your ideas when they come. Absolutely. And it's that lowering the barrier of like perfection that when you, when you get to a place where you don't have to be, go ahead. No, I was just going to, I mean, cut you. I was just going to say, you know, you don't have to be perfect. And that's uh, back to the programming, you know, back to the mindset, (sighs) worrying about what, uh, you know, your uncle uh, Bobby's going to say and, Uncle Bobby ain't gonna buy nothing from you. He ain't gonna engage on your post anyway. So why are you worried about it? But as entrepreneurs and business owners, I run into it all the time. I see it all the time. People having, you know, self doubt because of people who are never gonna spend one red dime with them. Like I don't really get it, you know, because I don't have that issue. I, my heart goes out to them. <laughs> but hey, you know, you just got to get over. Gotta, you have to get over that and get out of your own way because it's the stories you're telling yourself over and over. These are three. I hope I can come up with these three. I know the first thing that really gets in our way is the stories that we tell ourselves and others. And then number two is limiting beliefs. And then three is uh, judgments. Your, 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 the judgment about the consequences of these limiting beliefs. Mm. Like these are all fantasies we've gone, that are going on in our head with these stories we're telling ourselves. And nobody else is thinking like that because guess what? News flash, they're not thinking about you. <laughs> they're thinking about them all, their own self. Listen, you know, they got their own problems. Exactly. They got enough <laughs> Go stuff. They got their own uh, judgments, limits, yeah. and beliefs. And uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and I think that's the wildest part about the engagement and things like that. It's like when you, when you, mm-hmm. when you earn a like or you earn a comment on something that you create, yeah. you got to realize you remember that piece of content, but they going to forget. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. right. you're worried about what people are going to say when they don't engage, but it's like the people that are engaging are at least acknowledging you and they still mm-hmm. don't remember. They still forget. Exactly. Right. I um, yeah. was doing an interview with a, with a friend of mine that I met on TikTok. Her name's Connie, the Google queen. Uh, if you didn't check that show out, jump over there. I'll put the show in the notes so you can grab it. But her and I met because I engaged on a piece of her content. Right. And uh, I was like, I don't remember how we met. And she was like, I do. And yeah. it's interesting because <laughs> that right there is like, I remember when she told me, I was like, oh, I remember liking that and talking right. about it, but like, and, and, and messaging you. But at that moment, it yeah. was like a, a stop in the scroll for me. It wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't mm-hmm. a, a true moment for me. Right. Whereas like when somebody engages with your content and talks to you and then connects with you, they're like, oh, I remember this person. I remember how we got here, right? Like, yeah. I remember people yeah. like that, but they don't yeah, remember me. See, that's funny how that works. <laughs> Man, it's it's crazy. That there's there's several people that I've met on social media that I've like engaged with their content, but I don't remember. I don't remember what mm-hmm. piece it was. What right? Which piece? Right? No, it's like oh, you. I'm saying you drop content. I know you do. You got good but stuff. You, but, and that kind of reminds me of that quote, the first part of what you said, you know, um, how she was just, she just remembered it immediately. It's like that Maya Angelou quote, you know, she said that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Okay. So, you know, at the end of the day, you want to create engaging content. How are you making people feel? 
think about it that way. Yep. Because that's what it's engagement. That's what goes viral. If you notice, it's always the negative stuff that goes viral because it's usually some uh, high uh, high emotion in, involved in that. Yep. You know, <clears throat> so that's what um, a lot. That's why a lot of people end up going viral, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So as a business owner, you want to actually tap into that and use it for the right reason, and um, you know, use that to your advantage. So that kind of brings us. We we took this whole conversation in a different direction than what I had in my mind, but that's all good. Uh, so that brings us to that kind of brings us back to how do we turn social media engagement into like let's be real into cash flow. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't eat them likes. You can't, you can't cash them followers. They can't uh, get deposited in your bank no. account. Just talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so here's my formula. Uh, the four C's. You want to connect with your ideal client first before you even put out any content. You want to build your audience. Who do you want to talk to? So you want to connect with those types of people. Millionaires, multi-millionaires six, seven, eight figure earners, whatever. <clears throat> Just make sure that you do that first. <clears throat> you want to connect with your audience. Then after you do your research, like we talked about, you want to start creating content that that's going to engage them. And then after you create the content, you connect with them where you communicate with them through your messenger. What I like to do is get people on my text list, you know, I know a lot of people are still big fans of email marketing. I still am. I just feel like email is a bit slow for most people and people need right now money. And everybody opens up text, but well, not everybody. Like I think about what, 80, 80, 90% of text messages get open. Yeah, unless you're on my phone and, and it's, it's like 23. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we ain't going to talk about your phone right now. <laughs> And, you know, uh, you know about I guess about eighty percent of text yeah. messages get open. So you want to put people onto your calendar and on your text list. That's what I do. That's what I recommend. And this is uh, a strategy I'm going to be focusing on on LinkedIn. You talked about LinkedIn a little bit earlier. I did want to bring that up a little bit because LinkedIn is a different beast because LinkedIn is basically uh, it's like a, a networking event. Well, all social media is pretty much a networking event, but LinkedIn is the networking event that you want to be yeah, at. It's, it's the, but you gotta know how to work it's the only one that's blatant about it. Like, you know, and so you got to know how to work the room. Like everybody's there to sell and be sold. So you, the engagement factor is really, um, I think that's a miss, a normal on LinkedIn, not a miss normal, but I think that is not as important on LinkedIn because if you know what you're doing, and you know how to sell, then you don't have to be worried about that on LinkedIn because nobody's on LinkedIn because they want to get, you know, a hundred thousand likes. They want to get a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. <laughs> you know, the, that's what the people ask. The thing I will say that's a little different about the engagement on LinkedIn is that like, it's typically high intent engagement, right? So like, it's a different, you're right. It's a different beast. When somebody likes your stuff, mm -hmm. that is somebody that yeah. is really intent on whatever it is that you're saying. Like the people on LinkedIn, right. they're not on LinkedIn because they're, well, some of them are on there because they're bored, but the majority are on there for a right. specific purpose. And I'm on here because yes. I'm connected with people. I'm following up with somebody that I met at a networking event, or I'm trying to find an article that mm -hmm. I thought was insightful or, you know, whatever. I'm on here for some purpose, typically to educate or to connect, but I'm not there because right. I'm trying to. I'm trying to have fun. Like, like it's not entertain, right. not as entertainment driven right. as many of the other right. platforms. So you can go there, you can put in work and you'll see yeah. that for the same, like amount of likes you can make. Like if you got a thousand likes on Facebook, you might be able to make, you know, 10 calendar appointments. If you get right, 20 right. likes on LinkedIn, you might be able to make 10 calendar appointments. Right. So, the right. value is is way different, disproportionate. Right. You know, getting a hundred likes on LinkedIn is a lot. Absolutely, it's exponentially different. Yes, yes. absolutely. So, I don't know where you went. I hear you though. <laughs> so it, it's it's all good. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but we'll be all right. Um, yeah. If you were looking to connect with Mr. Douglas, uh, check out the show notes below. His contact information will be in there. Uh, Definitely his Facebook <laughs> and, 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 and some other, 
uh, says LinkedIn profile. We'll make sure that, that information gets in there so you can reach out, ask any yeah. follow up questions that you may have. Or if you're interested, uh, he does have a course that he sells on, uh, social media engagement and how to do those things. So if, if I've taken it, it's, it's fantastic. Get in there, get your chops up. Cause it's something that will take you beyond Facebook, right? It is definitely something that you can apply to other social media platforms. Um, if you, if, for anybody listening right now, part of my philosophy comes from some of the things that he's shared over the years. I respond to every single comment, everyone on all my <laughs> platforms. And trust me, it's a pain in the butt. Hey, I'm glad you, <laughs> but I'm glad you listened, it makes though. a it makes a huge difference, <laughs> right? So take the Absolutely. time, check them out. Um, if someone could only take one thing from our conversation, what would it be? Off the top of my head, I would have to say coaching, mentoring, um, advisor, whatever you want to call it. Find somebody who's already has success doing what you're trying to do and then learn from their mistakes, um, pay them, <laughs> join their community, you know, uh, support them and, you know, learn from them because they've paved the way. They've already answered. They, they could have basically, they basically found out all the answers to the questions that you don't even know to ask yet. Yeah. So a lot of us get in our way and say, well, I want to do it myself. I haven't found any one person online, offline, in, in history that's been su- successful doing anything that did it alone. So I would have to say your team is the most important thing. And, and uh, coaching is very important about, you know, one of the, the main things. You got to have coach, mentor, and team. That's what I would say, number one, just off the top of my head. Yeah, appreciate you sharing that. Mr. Douglas, thanks yep. so much for coming on the show. Uh, it's been great chatting with you. We'll follow up. I got some questions for you. Uh, we'll talk you. offline because I got I got some stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, that's a wrap for today's episode of Marketing Stuff. We've enjoyed sharing the nuggets that we have on today's episode. Make sure you don't miss out on a thing and get access to all the nuggets, including today and any in the future. Uh, click the link in the show descriptions to get any information that you would like to have and hit that subscribe button so you can get notifications for the future. But outside of all of that, stay out here winning, y'all.